Oh, did hit the button. <laughs> yeah, I almost tripped again. Can't hit the button and walk at the same time, apparently. So anyway, I guess it's sort of a preview video. Well, not really. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing a couple of response videos to a couple of crappy videos. Uh, yeah, we'll deal with the Piro attempt to move drunk drivers onto private property <laughs> as an analogy. Um, which is just basically saying I have more control over the birthing process than you really do, which makes it all bogus. Uh, the real liabilities of life can't be moved onto controllable uh, <laughs> a framework. So it's all kind of just nonsense. Um, then apropos of snow made a video, just really quite horrible. Uh, yeah, uh, he's a, apparently opposed to population growth. And he thinks that's anti-natalism, which is pretty funny. Well, it's not funny, it's tragic and pitiful. But anyway, um, yeah, but it's all, all this attempt to put faces on things. And, uh, oh, he's got, he's, he's, he's growing into such a fucking lawyer uh, with all this fucking bullshit about how we can't, we can't know anything. Yeah, there's no truth. Yeah, that's it. The, the, the career of a liar. Uh, but anyway, um, you'll fit right in. Um, yeah, let's live the lie. <laughs> yeah, the brain's not made uh, to deal with the truth. Yeah, yeah that uh, sounds like that, that almost should be the mantra of a lawyer. We're not made to know the truth, or to talk the truth, or to speak the truth, or to know the truth, or to think the truth, or to feel the truth, or to care about the truth. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I'm uh, making the video. Uh, so anyway, Nick made a couple of videos. I would, I, I would say, hey, there, go watch these videos, but that would be to my own interest. <laughs> so it's kind of stupid. Um, but uh, uh, just talking about the idea of how the argument is framed and how people, you know, this whole psychology problem, which sort of leads to Fred. Um, first, I could see the predictable psychology. As soon as Nick put Fred in the free will category, I could just see Fred getting his camera and saying, No, no, uh, no, I always use it as a metaphor. Um, which is kind of funny. Um, not even a metaphor, just acknowledging the fact that, uh, yeah, okay, it's all bullshit, but we can't think. We can't feel it any other way. And I guess I'd almost say that maybe we can. I mean, I can sort of see how I don't have it, <laughs> you know, my will is is complete bullshit. I mean, I can see it coming from my subconscious. I can see the pieces fly out. I can start to see re resemblances uh, to the circumstance of my life and the context of it and my maturation. I mean, if I look for it, I can certainly see the patterns of my development. And, uh, you know, there's nothing, there's no free agent in there. <laughs> it's a it's a product and uh, nothing more uh, coalescing of uh, disciplines and ideas and little programs running and one of them was a program that decided this true thing was sort of important and uh, that's where I guess the argument lies is there's a lot of these other people aren't running that true thing is important program and so their psychology is doing something else uh, you know, it's uh, what feels good, what idea do I like, what kind of fits me like a suit. Like they're trying on the truth like a suit. And, you know, if it's itchy or the tags are in the wrong place or, you know, it's the wrong material, it's too heavy. You know, they're just like, eh, no, I don't like that. No, let's, let's modify it. <laughs> you know, let's, let's get a truth that'll fit me better. What kind of bullshit going on. So if you don't have some sort of discipline saying, oh yeah, uh, philosophy is philosophy, psychology is psychology, yeah, there's going to be big problems. So that sort of relates to Fred, because he's doing this, he does a lot of this poetic-y stuff, you know, kind of looking at the reflection, even did that in a video with a little mirror, uh, you know, kind of getting the diffracted view of reality. Let's look at re uh, reality, let's turn our heads and squint our eyes and look through one eye and uh, you know play with it a little bit uh, to see what we're seeing because it is on the horizon it is out there 
can't really get up close and personal with the truth. You can only conceptualize it. You know, get the idea of a big round earth, but you can't really feel, you know, <laughs> really big. <laughs> you know, it's really big. You can't really get a hug of it and say, ah, yeah, I know what the earth is. You know, the cosmos, trillions, gazillions of little stars burning away. You can't really touch it. You can't really, can't really put it in your brain. It really just doesn't quite fit in there. So you have to do some, some manipulations of your senses, some little subtle distortions and, you know, eh, you know I can almost get it now. Uh, you know, to, to get a, a description of it, a feeling for it. Um, so yeah, that is okay, I suppose. But we, we know the danger here. Is as soon as you start putting on colored glasses and twisting and bending, you start seeing things that aren't there. You start seeing the ghost in the dark. You hear the sound and you, your brain adds up. Ah, oh, it's gotta be a ghost. Can't be a rat, it's a ghost. <laughs> you know, um, you know, it just opens this door to all kinds of fabrications by your psychology, not your intelligence. I guess some of it's fed by intelligence. You're just trying to reason through something but your, your reasoning is kind of clouded by the phantasmagorical uh, fake world presented to your uh, reflexes by media and culture and presumptions. I mean, all those idiotic, inane presumptions that we're born into, the lie that the game is going somewhere, that we're, that we're even playing a game, like it, like it actually has rules and uh, it's just a, I mean the game is you put your piece on the board and, and then you just sit there and, I don't know, uh, vibrate the table and see where the pieces end up. You know, see which ones, like, like, like the old hockey games used to be like that. You know, the little vibrating board and the pieces just crash into each other and shit and, you know, it was like whatever piece has a certain flaw or was heavier, or didn't fall over, was always going to win. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's just, you know, it's not even, you can't even call it a game, because it has no control features. <laughs> you know, you roll the dice, and you get a, a number, and it's like, it just flips the dice to another number, or whatever. I mean, it's just nothing. Uh, just about. Uh, so anyway... So back to the psychology versus philosophy thing. That's, you know, I've, I've tied a lot of videos with that kind of tag. Because I think that's so much of what goes on here. There's people trying to talk philosophy. And there's other people talking their psychology. They're talking how they want the suit to fit. They're not talking about the suit we got. And how to deal with it. And what the rational response is. And uh, when you look at four billion years of evolution, a stupid, silly molecule just reproducing, you look at the horrible waste and nonsense that that produced, you know, uh, 90 whatever percent of all species gone extinct, so they didn't even live to live. I mean, they struggled to live just so <laughs> they wouldn't live in the end anyway. They wouldn't even have a a representative stomping the earth. There's no brontosauruses still here. So they all kind of futilely chomped grass in vain. Well, chomped trees. Uh, just for nothing. For no enduring purpose. Just for a, a joyride. Uh, chomping trees and shitting trees. And chomping trees and shitting trees. I mean, that's the definition of a pleasure cruise nowadays, I guess. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no sale for me. Uh, you know, blighted by a zillion insects and, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Why, why would I buy a ticket on that ride? <sighs> no, thank you. Uh, again, so back to the psychology part. Where was I going with this? 
Uh, yeah, so philosophy, yeah, once you put the real context on top of this reality, uh, if you either do it poetically or strictly, you draw the real picture, put it on top of this thing as a transparency, DNA molecule basically out of control, no principles, no discipline, no rationality, no compassion, no empathy, no understanding of plus and minus, nothing. <laughs> And then you you look at this reality, you can see it. Yeah, it's, it's just it's fucking shit. It's it's purposeless. It's glue, out of control. Just gluing crap together. Just just glue it together. And if it stays glued together, it stays glued together. And then you just add a new piece of crap, and glue it on. And say, and say you're building something. You're not building anything. <laughs> yeah, you're just building something that survives. Oh, well, I can do that. Now, maybe I can't glue the Empire State Building to it, but I could glue this piece of horse shit over here. I could glue that on. Uh, I'll stick. I mean, it's just stupid. It's, it's non... It has no sensical purpose. Sensical. Yeah, well, that's not a good enough word. Um... Yeah, because it's not, it has no intention to be sensical. There's some horse shit. Yay, I blew it. Uh, yeah, and so without an intent to be sens sensical, without any fundamental mechanism to be sensical, it's not sensical. <laughs> I mean, shit. And that's the philosophical truth. And so here we as psychologies, trying to validate our existence, all right, so we're going to try to put that truth. Ah, oh, there's my egretter. I mean, my blue heron. What a great bird. 20 years I've known that bird. Well, 17, whatever the fuck it is. And it flies through these woods like that. It's amazing. And it does it well. Lonely life, though. Um, she had some, there was some white chick, you know, that he was hanging around with for a little while. But she took off. Uh, anyway, where was I? <sighs> yeah, so we as psychologists want to find some way to validate because that makes us feel better. That makes the suit fit more comfortably. We can wear it, we can manage it. Uh, we can put the suit of armor on, or whatever you want to call it, and we can clunk down the street and get to the store and buy our Fritos. And so that's all we really want to do psychologically. And, uh, but let's understand what that is. That, you know, as Nick says, it's making do as we throw our fucking intelligence in the toilet. Well, that's a hell of a price for the do. Uh, too much, way too much. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's really not that bad to just concede you're a mistake, you're an error. And just live out your life as an error. You can just you can print a little error on your T-shirt, error, you know, and just say, okay, I can see it. And what I want to do is just prevent the next error. Let's not make any more errors. Why make errors? Why make deliberately something you're going to have to put in a T-shirt that says error? You know, it's just stupid. So let's just be a sample. You know, let's a sample might be a good thing to print on your T-shirt. Okay, so we're just a sample. <laughs> you know, we don't have to be the real thing. Let's not make the real thing. Let's just concede the demo, the sample, sucks. I mean, it's just not good enough. And, uh, yeah, and so let's, let's not make any more of them. Let's play with the one we got and play our little Frito game. And then just say, okay, enough. enough. <laughs> There's no need to uh, try to perfect this. Uh, you know, Frankenstein is just kind of a bad idea. So we made a few billion. Uh, let's just concede the point. It doesn't really work very well. And say, fuck it. Let's just put error on them all. Stamp them. Uh, sample. Uh, free sample, even. Yeah, we can make them free. They already exist. So we can make them free. And uh, let's close her down. <laughs> let's shut the plant down. We don't need to make more of them. Imbeciles. Fuckers. Anyway, so I think that's a video. Surprisingly.
And there's actually, I think, some uh, worthwhile content in there. Uh, little psychological revelations of, oh, there is a reality. There is ground, and there's earth, and there is a DNA molecule. That is significant. We sort of have to account for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do it. And we can be honest, we can have integrity, and we can even be beautiful, even poetic. But as soon as you let that define reality, well, that yeah, game over. Now you're not just an error, you're a menace. Yeah, that's the difference. I have to write menace on your t-shirt. Once you let that poetry thing fuck your brain, then you're just a menace. You're leaking oil, you're spitting gas, you're, you're polluting <laughs> the environment of uh, rational movement. You're inhibiting uh, the only uh, progressive hope. Yeah, good enough. So, till the next time, and such, and so forth and whatnot.